is you just get rid of the absolute value signs, but you just put a negative in front of it. So this is y is equal to negative bracket 2x minus 1, which simplifies to be y is equal to negative 2x plus 1. So this graph, right, it has a y-intercept right here of 1 and has a negative slope, which that graph has. So using piecewise notation, finally, you can say this, that y is equal to the graph of y equals 2x minus 1 when x is greater than 1 half. So when x is greater than 1 half, we get that graph. And it's equal to y is equal to negative 2x plus 1 when x is less than 1 half. So when x is less than 1 half, basically this direction, we get the graph that looks like so. Okay, let's try the next one. For example b, notice that example b here has the absolute value of a quadratic function. So again, we're going to start off with our two cases. Case number one is going to be when our absolute value sign, so whatever is in our absolute value sign, is greater than or equal to zero. And case number two over here is going to be whatever's in our absolute value sign like so, is less than zero. Okay, so let's deal with the case number one first. So what you're going to do here is noticing that's a quadratic, um, recalling what we learned in, uh, in unit six, I'm going to try and factor first. So I factor out a negative x, giving me an x plus three like so. And then from here, right, if you remember, what we do is we set those equal to zero and we try and give ourselves a little bit of a sketch. So when we sketch this, this one gives you, we have a root of zero, so this one's x equals zero and this one's x equals negative three. So I have a root right here at 0 and a root right here at negative 3. Since the graph is a leading coefficient that's negative, it's going to open downwards. And so we have something like this. Well, take a look, right? They're asking, when is this graph greater than 0? Well, the graph is greater than 0. This should kind of go through that point. But the graph is greater than 0 when it is between negative 3 and 0, right? So how do we express that? We say x is less than or equal to 0 and greater than or equal to negative 3. Okay. Well, now we mosey on over to case number two right here, right? And this one we are going to reference, right? Because this is still the same graph that we have right here. It's taking a look at when is this graph less than zero? Because if we think of it, right, that's the one parabola that gives you this region right here. But this parabola, right, in if I highlight kind of this region right there and there, that part is actually going to be reflected, right? So it's going to make a different parabola. And I'm trying to figure out what that parabola looks like. Well, that parabola is actually just the same thing as we had right there, only you just have to feed a negative into it, right? And so um, what we notice, right, is we notice that this graph is going to be less than 0 for x values that are greater than 0. So when x is greater than 0 and when x is less than negative 3, okay? But what would the equation of this new function look like? Well, that equation of that new function would just be y is equal to a negative bracket negative x squared minus 3x. So just like I did for the question before, I just feed a negative in and we get y is equal to x squared plus 3x. So finally, our answer in piecewise notation will look like so. We have y is equal to, okay. uh, the first scenario, what do we have? We have a negative x squared minus 3x. So the first scenario is case number one over there. What did we find out was my solution? Well, we found it's equal to that when, or if, x is between 0 and negative 3. The second scenario over here, we found that this equation, right, that's this part right there, that's equal to x squared plus 3x. And when does that happen? That happens when x is greater than 0 and when x is less than negative 3. All right, so that completes this lesson. Uh, to summarize, what have we figured out? Uh, when graphing, uh, make sure you graph the regular function and then just take basically everything that is negative and reflect it over the x-axis. Um, using piecewise notation, try to think about what the function kind of looks like. We're basically just trying to define, right, like what happens, like what does this graph look like for those values? What does this graph look like for those values? And, uh, and that's what the piecewise notation is all about.